I love me some Russell Brand. I love Russell Brand. I, uh, you know, know that he's been on a spiritual quest. I've watched him come from, you know, almost an A-list celebrity in Hollywood and his marriage to Katy Perry, which I was, I've prayed for Katy forever in my heart. I love her parents, her family, her brother. And then watching their marriage deteriorate, watching Russell be very public about his uh, addictions and especially with drugs and with um, things with women through the years and he's just been an open book he went on a spiritual quest of enlightenment and he started a youtube channel and started to promote more conservative values than almost any other kind of used to be loud rock and roll kind of comedian and where raunchiness was his brand trademark and all of a sudden comes into a conservative kind of mindset where he's in the middle but he leans way right and just watching his him grow and millions of people listen to him daily and weekly I've been like, wow, I want to keep my eyes on this guy. And, you know, he, he's um, been right next to, like, parallel to a lot of Christian themes and a lot of conservative themes that I care about. He tweets things out on X, I follow him on X, that I just go, yes, yes, Russell, I agree with you. But in the midst of it all, he's been on a spiritual quest where he's tried many religions. You see his tattoos, you see his practices. And this last week, he got baptized, which is really amazing. Now, in that baptism, I don't think he mentioned Jesus once in the videos that I've watched, maybe one time. And talking about why he was baptized. Most of it was for the empowerment of becoming kind of renewed or a new birth. And it was done kind of in the conglomerate of the religions he practices. But it sounds like he identifies most with Christ and with the principles of the Bible. But he's still open. As a matter of fact, the next day after the baptism, he pulled out tarot cards and asked a question to his audience. Like, I'm going on this journey that's kind of Bible-centric or Christian-centric. What kind of journey are you going into? And can you have a hybrid where you mix the occult like tarot cards? No. Not really. Or where you can't. And so he's he's one of those figures that people are asking the question, is this just Kanye 2.0? Or is he doing this because he's had controversies and he's trying to look like a good guy in the midst of a controversy? I don't think that's the case. I think he really has been very, very, very clear on his um, and his role of ever evolving into a better version of himself and trying to use Christianity in the midst of that. But is he really surrendering his life to the Lord Jesus Christ and getting baptized to become a new creation through Jesus? I'm not sure yet, but I love that there's a journey on this. I'm going to show a couple of videos. And the first one is where he's talking about pre-baptism, about why he's doing it. This Sunday, I'm taking the plunge. I'm getting baptized. At the moment, I'm very curious as to what you who have been baptized feel about it, what your expectations are of the event prior and what it's actually like. What's been explained to me is it's an opportunity to die and be reborn, an opportunity to leave the past behind and be reborn in Christ's name, like it says in Galatians, that you can live as an enlightened and awakened person. Sometimes I think of non-Christian perspectives on it, like Marcus Aurelius saying, you are already dead, now live the rest of your life properly. Or the Buddhist saying, put down the corpse. All of these things seem so inviting and beautiful. So he does constantly, even though he's bringing up other religions, because he's really trying to be on that quest where he looks at humanity and goes, we're all fallen, but there's redemptive parts in it. And I want to find those redemptive parts, pull them out, highlight those and live my best life and through those. But Christ is the most, the person I identify with the most through all this. And the Bible is what I identify the most as I've been reading the Bible. He's been reading the Bible prolifically. If you've been part of his audience, he'll quote the Bible regularly. He's been reading some deep books, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis, other books that are really powerful. I think some Tim Keller stuff. So he's actually on the quest where Christianity is the most defining of all the religions. But when you hear him, there's still a quest. He's like, he's, he hasn't thrown some things out to pull some things in. I know a lot of people are sort of cynical about the increasing interest in Christianity and the return to God. But to me, it's obvious as meaning deteriorates in the modern world, as our value systems and institutions crumble, all of us become increasingly aware that there is this eerily familiar awakening and beckoning figure that we've all known all of our lives within us and around us. And for me, it's very exciting. One of my concerns is I'm thinking about doing it in the River Thames. So I could be getting sort of baptized in toxoplasmosis and E. coli <laughs> based on what I've learned. So I may be leaving behind the sins, but I might be picking up some pretty serious viruses. Let me know what you guys <laughs> think about it and how you feel about it. And he was legitimate. He was actually in the comment section and he was all kinds of people. I even told him like what happened to me with baptism, that it was a really profound 
Christ-centered experience that like I felt like I wasn't just making a choice that was part of it, but I did feel like there was a spiritual exchange, and I think that that's an important part of it. And so he was commenting back to people in his comment section, and again, I like what he's saying where it's like as things are deteriorating, people can see Christ more. That's a biblical principle. As, as morality uh, increases, darkness increases, the light is more visible. Jesus commissioned us to be a light like a city on a hill. And you can't be a city on a hill unless it's a real dark night. So I think he's getting some of the principles in this, but there is like that 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 subtle language where there's like, you know, spirituality at the, the cost of enlightenment and using everything for your own gain. It's almost like a narcissism in Christianity that can happen many times. And so some Christians are afraid that's what he's becoming. I don't think that's what he's becoming. I think that's just what people are afraid he's becoming. I think he's still on the journey or the quest of figuring out how Christianity works for him. But let's keep going. There's another video I'm going to show you. It was right after post Post-baptism, let's watch this. Post-baptism brand. Yesterday, I got baptized and it was an incredible, profound experience. And many of you will have had your own experiences of baptism and will therefore know what I'm talking about. Many aspects of it were very intimate and personal. The truth is this, as a person that has in the past taken many, many substances and always been disappointed with their inability to deliver the kind of tranquility and peace and even transcendence that I always felt I've been looking for, Something occurred in the process of baptism that was incredible, overwhelming, literally overwhelming, because I was obviously underwater and it was the River Thames at some points. So I felt changed, transitioned. Now, of course, even though it's been less than 24 hours in the interim period, I've already felt like sort of irritation. I've got three children. I've got a job. I've got challenges. I still live in the world. But I feel as if some new resource within me has switched on. Now, that's the right language. The only thing I don't like about it is I wish you would refer to how it comes from Christ's nature and dwelling in us. It's not just a power. It's not just imbuement that we get because we did a ceremony or a ritual or it's not just a spiritual exchange, but it's actually us becoming, dying to ourselves and becoming alive in Christ is a symbol. And then it's also a ritual that Christians perform, but it's also God does do, I mean, he's using some really great language. Like I go, man, if he, if he defined it more along the lines of a Christian faith, I think it would it'd be easier for Christians who are criticizing it to believe in. But I, I actually, because I listen to him so much, I actually believe in the, and this could be my naivety or it could be my love for him and my prayers for him, but I actually believe in the, the, the actual bottom line of what he's saying. So many of your comments have been so beautiful and encouraging, and I really appreciate it. And also even the cynicism, I understand, because some people will just see me as a celebrity, but I don't see me as a celebrity, because I was me when I was a little boy, I was me when I was a junkie, I was me when I was poor. I've been me in all of the different phases, but I recognize that anything in this terrain, in the sort of social media world, could be exploited and utilized. For me, I've made the decision and I know what the decision is. I've made it for myself and I pray that it will be relevant to my family, in particular, my children. My wife's Catholic. You know, she's already made her own choices in this life, including this one. This is new for me. I'm learning and I will make mistakes. But this is my path now. And I already feel incredibly blessed, relieved, nourished, held, it's been an incredible experience. I wish I could tell you exactly about it because there were amazing individuals involved. So before I go on from that, it's one of the comments I saw over and over that like was under this particular video was that people are saying, but do you feel saved? And one of the tenets of faith is that we recognize as Christians that like God saved me from, you know, my ego. He saved me from some sexual sin. He saved me from um, a path I would have chosen in my own nature and my own sinful carnality. He saved me from so much. And so when I was baptized, I was literally going to become renewed and I was wanting to tap into the saving grace of Jesus, amazing grace, how sweet the sound who saved a wretch like me, I'm a wretch. And then he saved me and now he's recreating me through his life. And so a lot of people didn't hear the salvation side where it's like, I was a sinner in sin and now I'm made new. So me personally, like I didn't hear that in it either. And I was, I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that when I was reading the comments. Like I didn't, I didn't hear that side of the, and it just wasn't his salvation experience. I don't know. He had, he hasn't really talked about a day where he was saved. This was his baptism. But typically those are a little hand in hand. So again, this is why he's getting criticized by some people who are like, is this just another Kanye who's just using Christianity as one of the forms of what boosts his 
presence, you know, to the, the crowds he's with. And he, and there's some parts of it that are real to him, but at the same time, like Kanye won all the Grammys and, uh, or so, sorry, all the gospel awards in the gospel award show the year he was making gospel music. And that was partially because there was grace on him from all the people he surrounded himself. He paid some of the best of the best in the gospel industry. Some of that was because he's really gifted. I mean, he has redemptive gifts on him and the gifts of God are, you know, are irrevocable. God gives them to us whether we use them for him or not. And then some of it was just because he had a lot of money and a lot of influence, a lot of drama in his life. And so it's hard when someone like Kanye goes from winning all the gospel awards and then now is talking about Yeezy porn. He might start a porn company and, and he has said, Jesus didn't answer my prayers. I don't believe in Jesus. I am God. So a lot of people are looking at Russell Bryan going, is this just part one element of a many elements in your story or is this a central part now of who you are? There were incredible and bizarre incidents that took place that felt serendipitous and laden. You know, I do a show every day. I'll be talking about this stuff in the show because it's part of my mission and it's part of my ministry and it's part of my service. This is new to me and it's a joy to me. And I know that I'm not expected to be perfect and I know that that's not something I'll be able to deliver. Those of you that have embraced me, I'm so grateful. I can't tell you how happy I feel and how relieved I feel. But as you know, if you know, my resources are coming from somewhere else and someone else now. Thank you so much for your support. Let's keep doing this together or certainly I'm just gonna do what I'm doing. Wow, so this is a great video because he's sharing from the depth of what the I mean, to a, a crowd that realized maybe a small percent is Christian, a crowd where he's, he's living out the beginnings of his Christian faith, what he believes is Christ, Christ in a faith and he's dedicated to the faith through baptism. But this isn't a time he's sharing at Joel Osteen's church like Kanye did, where he's trying to get clout to the Christian community for what he's doing. If he was doing that, he wouldn't do the next video. What's the next video I think is showing that I'm still not sure about everything yet. I'm still trying to pull together pieces. This is what Christ means to me, but I'm still looking for spiritual signs and symbols that might may or may not come from God. And so let's watch this because this is the video that broke the Christian internet where people are like, he is not a Christian. He doesn't understand. But you have to realize he's brand new to this faith and he's just dedicating to it. He's just trying to figure out, is this okay to mix in? Is this okay to mix in? What's What makes a Christian? And he hasn't really studied the Bible theologically fully yet. So it's I don't know. I'm making a case for Russell that he's on a journey. We need to like watch the journey and have compassion. And the moment you get that trigger of like, ew, don't go ooh towards Russell. Go, God, give him wisdom. Give him clarity. Give him, Lord, show him. Send people around him and we'll show him what, how you do talk and how do you speak and how you do bring signs and wonders, which are all through the Bible and how you've done that throughout history and you're doing it still today. Let's watch the video. Middle in the cultist arts. Kidnapped and held hostage by some railings. That can't be good news, can it? Oh, it's the old kidnapped and held hostage by some railings card. That's good. That means you are going to get a new puppy. Now, this was the next day or day after the baptism. So this isn't like three months ago. This is like right now. He just gets baptized. He's talking about his faith. And then he's reading tarot cards to himself. Like, it's not going to be that, is it? Well, actually, we've looked into it. And this symbolizes, this card is called the Eight of Swords. And it symbolizes feeling trapped and restricted, perhaps by your own convictions, self-imposed barriers that can be shed with an open mind. Do you feel trapped? Are you in a state of anxiety and fear? And can you remove the blindfold to become free? And yes, you can. And you know, one of the ways you can do that is our sponsor is our own book, Wired to Hear. Wired to Hear is a book that I wrote with Bob Hassan, and we talk about how each one of us is wired to hear God. And as you give yourself over to understand the discernment, the intuition, and just the way you hear it, it's organic to your nature to know what God thinks, to feel his feelings, but you got to do it in context to reading the Bible and having a connected relationship to him. And if you want to know what that looks like, what Russell's talking about, and this is, he's trying to do it through tarot cards, you could do it through your own God wiring that he's wired you through, but it's through him being the source. There's no other source. And you're going to love this book, Wired to Hear, so much. And if you're a business person or a person pursuing a career or influence, this book was written for you because we do a lot of uh, stories and business discussion as far as how do you carry that place of being wired to hear for your purpose that's not ministry centric or church centric but for your purpose that's in your career in your mission field the place you're called to go you're going to love this book and it's on sale right now and if you buy the book you get a free master class so go to bullsministries.com which is the only place to get this deal and click on this banner right now which you can see it on the screen or click on the banner that says wired to hear and you get this incredible deal and it's such a low price to get the master class on the book for one low price of just paying for the book you're going to love it and this is going to support our ministry and videos like this being made too now let's look back at russell as he's talking about tarot cards 
I'm interested, I suppose, in the intuitive reactions one might have to tarot, particularly as I move into a more clearly delineated spiritual space with a more clearly ordained path, i.e. a lot of Christians would say that tarot and even yoga is a kind of heresy. What's your personal view on that? Do you still use stuff like this and the I Ching? Do you still look out for symbols and signs as you move further down a particular pathway? One thing for sure that when you get something like that it does serve as a tool for reflection and personal analysis what i love about what he can discover because he's so obviously spiritual and intuitive is that god wired us just like i said about wired to hear a book god wired us for signs and symbols when you look at how god spoke through that old testament and the new testament there's all this symbolism and when you get awakened to it you look for god's symbols and signs in your life but they come in ways that reveal his nature not just make you feel good or just one ups or a fortune cookie but it actually reveals more the nature of christ to you which causes you to grow more because you're not just growing in purpose you're not just growing in uh wisdom or just understanding but you're growing in closeness to the man christ jesus through his spirit and i love that russell's going to discover this because there's many counterfeits to that where there's these tools that are not sourced by jesus or by his spirit and these tools when they're used by your own intuition or even the spiritual climate around you that isn't god like you're inviting it into your life, especially occult tools, which were authorizing spirits to engage with you many times. Then when you're using those, it's a counterfeit to what God wants to bring you, which is true peace that passes understanding and true direction that passes normal human effort and all these things. But you got to get it from God directly from his heart and from his spirit. And it doesn't mean it doesn't come through signs and symbols around you, but it doesn't come through... Uh, the counterfeit signs and symbols. Because, yeah, I do feel if I removed the blindfold or let the scales fall from my eyes, I would see more clearly what the path is. You know, I read today, I think, on Hallo, and, you know, it's a, an app that I use for meditation. It's absolutely beautiful that if you focus on God, that is all you have to do. God will do everything else. Now, you hear stuff like that and it sort of makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? You think, well, all right, so what am I actually worried about now? I'm worried about this attack. I'm worried about this aspect of my family life or this aspect of my personal partnership. You know, like, how do I focus on God? Well, I suppose what that means is I have faith. I trust. I remove the blindfold and see that the pathway of God is the only pathway for me. God is in charge of my relationship. God is in charge of my working life. So he asked the question. This is where a lot of Christians stopped at just the tarot cards. Then he asked the question, can you mix these things together? Then says in my reflection, this is what God's showing me. In my reflection that God's the only pathway. And so I think it's, you know, it's wild that uh, a lot of Christians stopped at just the tarot cards because he's in the journey. Like he's literally processing his spirituality in front of humanity right now. And instead of um, listening to the whole story or instead of just having patience that this is part of a several year process a lot of people because he's a public figure are just immediately judging one statement or one part of what he's saying without looking at the whole and I know what God's principles are service kindness faith trust hope charity gratitude acceptance surrender you know so if I'm not doing that stuff oh wow well, is that eight swords let's just say that one weren't there then you know, if I'm not doing that stuff, then no wonder I'm feeling anxious. What do you think about that? And are you happy with hybrid modalities where you're able to meddle in occultist arts? I mean, that's, is that a pentagram? I'm not sure what kind of star that is, but there's some questions. Are you happy to use hybrid models from woo to Q, as I heard Duncan Trussell once say? Yeah, so see, he's, he's on the journey. He's deciding. He's kind of answering it to his own audience like, I don't think I can do this. I'm supposed to focus on God and just he's the pathway. And then he goes back into, I'm going to say the eight of you know, whatever, I don't know, tarot cards, but the eight of clubs or whatever he said. <laughs> Wait, I said eight of clubs. Is that like playing cards? Sorry. And maybe you just play playing cards for readings too. I don't know. But uh, you know, he's, he talks about these things. And so I think he's just on the journey. And so I think here's what I would like to process with you as far as, you know, and com commenting on this and processing it with, together is that people are on their own journey. We're not in charge of their journey and we can't direct their journey. Everyone's in charge and justified by their own faith. But when someone's leaning into faith, our first response shouldn't be to, on their social media to troll them. Wrong, 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 evil, wrong, right? Or to tell them all the things that they have to do right. Our first response should be, I congratulate you for getting baptized, for making a public for, for, uh, confession, a profession of Christ. I am praying for you. And yeah, sometimes we hold them accountable if they're saying it publicly. Yeah, just so you know, tarot cards in most Christians' belief systems 
are antichrist. They're not. They're not even just alongside Christianity. It's something that's bad. It's actually anti because you're not communicating to God for the sake of God or just through a spirit. You're using alternative spirits. And so there's times to hold people accountable and say, "Hey, that's that's not. That's a mixture. And when there's mixture, you can't have God without measure. And so we want to have God without measure. And to have that deeper place that you're awakened to, you're not going to be able to have it with that too. So I think there's times to say that, but there's times to say it in truth and love, and especially in connection. So if you're not connected in your heart to love, you're not going to have authority. So what I saw in the comments section of a lot of his videos over the last week was people who had zero authority to even talk to him. He didn't even respond to those because he knew they weren't giving in a spirit of relational love or Christ-like fellowship. They were given in the spirit of correction or of um, uh, even policing or management. They were Karens of Christianity who were trying to Karen him and take him to the manager and take him into the, you know, the HOA of Christianity and say, you're building your house wrong. And that's just never going to work. So how do we do it right? We need to do something. We have to be a voice at times, but we have to do it in the spirit of love. And I think that's, I was encouraged by the people I did see who loved. And I saw even some of the friends that I have who made comments to him. And he commented back. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. Because that means that he's listening to a diverse group of people, especially Christians who I know who would speak into his life in the right way. Well, anyways, if you haven't seen the baptism video yet, it's a beautiful video. And I want to hear what you think of Russell Brand. And if you had an audience with him to say something to him today, what would you say? Tell me in the comments below.